Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ. Now, if you saw my previous video or you watched the most excellent uh, Plastic Crack podcast every Monday at 8 p.m., you will know that I'm working on a, um, an, a brand new bolt action project, uh, specifically uh, Polish Airborne um, for bolt action. And I've been using the British uh, plastic box uh, by Warlord uh, to do this. Um, now, one of the things that struck me is that I've actually been painting camouflage and quite enjoying it. Um, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you know that I'm not, not the greatest fan of, of painting camouflage. Um, but last year, I did a couple of videos about painting VAF and SS camouflage and also uh, Luftwaffe camo as well. So I am slowly but surely uh, conquering my fear of painting camouflage. So what I thought I'd do in this video, just a very, very quick how I paint. Um, the camouflage on, on uh, British Paras, Dennis and Smocks. Uh, like I said, these can equally be applied to Polish Airborne as well. They use the same equipment um, and same uniforms. So, um, very much of a much as you can use one or the other. What I thought I'd do is just show you the colors that I'm gonna use, the techniques and the processes, um, and we'll go from there. So first off, let's have a look at what I've done so far. So this is what the, the actual uniform looks like now. As you can see, it's quite striking. When I paint camouflage, what I always aim for is I don't go for 100% historical accuracy. What I want is a representation that's gonna pop on the tabletop. And I think they, these will. Quite, quite happy with that. And it's actually really simple to do as well. And I hope that hopefully this video will show you just how simple it is to achieve that, that result. I mean, it's probably not 100% historically accurate, but from what from a recent, the research I've done is that there was no real set camo scheme, um, just, you know, whatever you could do. Um, but I've done a bit of research. I've looked at uh, a lot of tutorials, other people's videos um, and guides um, to get a sort of an idea of the colors I was gonna use. Um, and also the other week we had um, Big Rich Clark on from uh, Two Fat Lardies on the podcast. And before that, we were talking a bit, bit, bit of a chin wag about um, painting um, paratrooper camouflage. Um, and we use the same base uh, color, but we have different greens and browns. It's always good to know that people use you know, different techniques and different processes. So what I'm gonna do is show you exactly the colors I'm gonna use. Um, I'm not gonna do a live painting because people know I'm not really a fan of that. I'd rather show you what I've done and the technique and go away and do the rest of it. So here is the test figure. As you can see, a very, very basic painted um, Polish airborne trooper here. What you'll notice though is the smock color. So for this, I've gone for this, which is Vallejo Middlestone from the uh, the Panzer series. Uh, I saw quite a few people recommending this um, on their, their how-tos or their tutorials. Um, other people have used khaki or green brown or lots of different shades of brown um, and then applied just different different colors over it. Again, it's all, all much of a personal preference uh, as to how you want to do your camouflage. Um, now the two colors I eventually chose for, because I went through quite a lot deciding which you know, which ones I was gonna use. So for the, the greens on the um, on the camouflage, I'm going to be using this, ooh, which is Vallejo Bronze Green. It's quite a middle green, it's not too bright, it's not too dark, but it works really, really well uh, with the wash. And for the brown, brown camouflage element, we're going to be using this, which is um, again, Vallejo Saddle Brown. Again, quite bright, quite a bright brown, but it works really well with the wash. Um, now, what I found is the wash we're going to use is Agrax Airshade, my old favourite, the old Liquid Talent, uh, works really well with this bright, um, bright sort of um, uniform colour for the, for the smock itself. As you can see, once the wash goes on and the highlights are applied, it really does, you know, dull it down. So starting with a bright colour like that really does help once the uh, once the wash is applied. So what I'm gonna do now is go away um, and apply the first lot of camouflage, which is gonna be the bronze green. Um, and I'll talk you through exactly how I've done that when I come back. So I shall see you all in a little bit. Hello and welcome back. And that is the first part of the process completed. So as you can see, I've just used the, uh, the bronze green to apply a series of irregular um, <laughs> blobs. <laughs> the best way to describe it blobs to the uniform um just really random patches um what i always do with this though is i really really water my paints down when i'm applying camouflage like this uh, it just it just helps it flow better when you 
you're creating those those shapes trying to do that with sort of dry gunsy paint wouldn't work really too well uh, I also use a, a when I'm applying this camouflage I use a triple knot my, my triple knot from, uh, Windsor and Newton series 7 just gives it that extra bit of control um, and you can you can really get those 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 shapes down so there's, there's no real pattern to them but it's important that you know I don't make them too big or too small but there we have it so that's the first the first part of the process done so what I'm gonna do now is go away and apply the brown using saddle brown so I shall see you soon hello and welcome back and that is the second layer of camouflage applied to the smock so I've just used the, um, the saddle brown again just to apply irregular irregular blobs sort of um, next to and over the top of the green um, just gives it that sort of mostly covered look with, with the original um, saddle brown saddle brown middle stone <laughs> even shot coming through um, and that that's the actual camouflage scheme done so what's next up, ne up next is the the really magic part of this process what I'm going to do is apply a heavy wash of Agrax Earthshade across the um, the entire model um, I'm really not sure why <laughs> the, the lights having a really bad <laughs> it's having a really bad effect on this dude's face he's making him more worse <laughs> oh god anyway what I'm going to do is apply a wash of um, Agrax Earthshade to the entire model. Um, I'm not going to show you that because no one, nobody wants to see me applying a wash to a figure. Everyone does it. So I'm going to do that and then come back and show you what it looks like before we put the highlights on. And hopefully this will demonstrate exactly what the wash does to these three colours. So I shall see you all when the wash has dried. And so that is the... The look of the figure once the Agrax Earthshade wash has fully dried. As you can see, it's brought that um, the brightness of all three colours right down. Um, that um, middle stone is no longer as bright as it was. I just think that the wash works really, really well with those three colours. So it's a little bit dark, so what we need to do now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, what I like with my camouflage is for it to, from three feet away, really pop. Um, not to be overly stark or overly bright just so you can see this camouflage so what we need to do is highlight the camouflage smart it's dead easy to do all I do is to the the bronze green and the saddle brown add a very very small drop of sunny skin tone and to the bits of the smock that are in middle stone that are just poking through you don't need to lighten that's quite a light color anyway so I think adding uh, a brighter color to that for the highlight would just make it a bit too a bit too bright so what i'll then do is go in and highlight the bits of the smock just with plain middle stone just to bring out the upper surfaces uh, once i've done that i will come back and show you what that looks like so i shall see you all in a little bit and so with the highlights completed i thought i'd just go the whole hog and finish the entire figure as you can see it's quite basic um, my normal bolt action one layer of, uh, of highlights but I think it demonstrates just how quickly this process can work um, with the two two-tone camouflage like I mentioned at the start of the video there's no real right or wrong answers when it comes to camouflage I think this is this is even more true with, with this style um, you can you can use any, any combination of greens browns ready browns beiges and you really will get that, that sort of airborne camouflage look as you can see when I've added the highlights I haven't I haven't highlighted all of the all of the patch I just tend to hit the sort of the most upper um, uppermost parts of the uh, of the camouflage and like I mentioned before as well with the middle stone you don't need to you don't need to brighten that as you can see it's bright enough just go in and I just hit the upper parts of the the remaining parts of the smock but there we go that is my How I Paint British or oh, Polish Airborne Camouflage. Hope you found that helpful. Um, I'm still a little intimidated by painting camouflage, so I'm, I'm always learning. Um, like I said, I don't always aim for the 100% historically accurate. Um, I'm not going to achieve that. What I'm looking for is tabletop quality and something that looks good from three feet and gives the, the unit a sort of a consistent feel. And hopefully I've achieved it with these. If you've got any comments or questions about this or 
bolt action or gaming in general to leave them down below and I'll certainly respond to all comments and questions but as always thanks for watching do take care uh, may dice roll well and I'll catch you all in the next video so bye bye for now